Go ahead. Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome to All Politics Is. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're sitting here with a Lawrence City Council candidate, Lawrence City Council at large candidate, JT Torres. Uh, we're at his house right now. Thank you for having us first off. A pleasure Appreciate it, JT. Um, pleasure so, having you back there too. So uh, we're just here, we're talking with JT. Uh, we have an upcoming primary election. It's like less than two weeks now, right? Right so on the it's, corner, it's buddy. creeping up now. It'll be Tuesday, up fast. Tuesday September 26th. Uh, polls will be open here in Lawrence. Ten candidates running at large. Right, there's ten of I think there's yes. ten of you now. There's ten of them there's running at ten. large, and, and the primary you're going to narrow it down to six. Correct. And then after that, you'll narrow it down to three. But when you go to the polls on Tuesday, you'll get to choose three people, and we have one of those candidates here with you. So JT, thank you very uh, much. You want to take a chance to introduce yourself? Just let everyone know who you yeah, are. Yeah, but let me before that too. Remember, there's early voting too right now. Oh, there, so, oh yes, you can go if you wanted uh, absentee ballots. Uh, you want to go to city hall. Uh, you can take care of that ahead of time. If you're working that day, it's important that you get out. And vote. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I just wanted to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, I don't want to try to miss any no. votes if I can. No, 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 go for it. So, um, as you know, well, many, those that don't, my name is JT Torres. I uh, I wear multiple hats. I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. <laughs> um, but I try to do my part. So I came to this, to this city about two months. I think that w one of my aunts, actually, was one of the first pioneer Puerto Rican individuals that, that landed yeah. in the city back back in the day. Uh, I think she was one of the first Puerto Ricans actually that came to the city. So I've been here ever since. Uh, the only time that I've, I mean, and I've broken a lot of windows in this city. And it's so <laughs> ironic. It's so ironic that here I am. I'm running for office and trying to fix those same very windows that I broke <laughs> when I was like yeah. 10. Yeah, you know? as a young kid. Haven't we all, though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I've been here from those days. I've been here. You know, I don't know if many remember the Pappy's Bakery. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, Common yeah, Street, yeah, yeah. and then, you know, I remember going there, knocking, twelve-year-old, yep. walking, walking on the door, and with my fifty cents and giving them fifty cents, and they come out with a nice, warm oh, loaf of garlic bread. Yeah, yeah, so it was phenomenal. So I remember those days. Yeah, I remember those days, and and I'm hoping that we can do something to try to bring some of that back. But been here, then I joined the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. um, around seventeen, going on to eighteen. Uh, Went off to Marine Corps, did a couple tours in uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, one for Desert Shield, Desert Storm, which that was for 18 months straight. Which that was a little too much. That was just, that's a lot, yeah. yeah. A lot to take on. And now, now deployments are about a year. Yep. You know what I mean? So then I did, again, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. So the only time I've left this city, really, it's in, been in service to my country. Other than that, I've come here. Uh, I, I come back all the time. I could have stayed in California. I was stationed in Hawaii, so uh, you know I could have definitely stayed yeah, out there. Yeah. But I chose to come back to my city, and you know, what can I tell you, man? I'm a hard worker. I don't do this for the glory of it. I don't do it to feather my nest. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just doing the right thing, which is not very hard to do. Before we get right really going on it, though, let everyone know what you're doing now. You kind of you play a big role right now in a nonprofit. I do, I do. Thank you. That's Thank really you for important. bringing that up. Thank you very much. Uh, so I founded an organization called New England Veterans Liberty House. It's a, a local uh, agency here at 599 Canal Street, 6th floor, 978-258-2331, uh, before I forget. Um, yeah, w they're doing, my staff, my volunteers are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, so we help, yes, veterans of of Lawrence, but we also open our doors to veterans across the country. Yep. So it's not just because you're from Massachusetts, or you're not from Massachusetts, I'm not going to help you. No, I'm going to help you. Right. You're, you're a veteran if you come from California or a veteran from Vermont. So what we do there on a daily basis is just deal with the daily essential needs. Food, electricity, gas, oil, minor repairs in the home shovel out their walkways, cut their grass, stuff like that. Yeah. They need on a daily basis. Yeah. Now, we do much more, you know, with case management and referrals and all kinds of other stuff, but that's our core key element, yeah. and, and it's personal. I have 1,500 raw meals that we give a month there. Nice. Uh, we just open up to the general public on Wednesdays, every Wednesdays yeah. now. Yeah, just Wednesdays for the civilians. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays is for my veterans. Um, during that time, again, we give all that food. Plus, um, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, no, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we have groups that come in, other veterans that come in just to you know, bump the gums and yeah. war stories and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do a lot. And I don't think if we were here, um, you know, I look at it now, I was going to walk away from all this. It was just too much work. But we're too deep, knee deep in it, and the need is, is 
huge, 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 huge. So imagine. that's why I stick around with it. But yeah, I'm happy to be there, man. I'm happy well, to have it. I'll get a little bit more in depth because I got a little bit of question about homelessness oh, and, and veterans. But we'll, we'll get in, we'll get into that topic no specifically problem. a little bit. But uh, apologize for jumping the gun. No, 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 that's fine. Just no, going with the no, flow. absolutely, go for it. Uh, but why don't we start off with we, basically we're starting off with every candidate. Yep. JT, uh, you you know you've served multiple tours overseas. Roger. Uh, you've been all over the, the country. You you say you, you keep coming back to the city. Blessed. Why now? Why are you running for city council? Why why did you decide a couple months ago say you know what this is the time? Because we already talked your life is hectic. Why why now? I want my life to make a difference. Right? Mm -hmm. That's one. That's right. Maybe all of us. Yeah. I think it was the right time for me to do this after I actually got the knowledge in the nonprofit world, and, okay. and I dealt a lot with. Um, I was dealing a lot with politics. Yeah, um, I'm See not a lot a of government from that side. Yeah, yeah. I learned yeah. more things than what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. But seeing all those inner workings, mm -hmm. I just didn't like what I'm seeing. Um, the administration that's here now, and it's no secret, um, then is my brother in arms. Right, uh, veteran so himself, yeah. Much respect, and I think that him at the helm right now, and maybe good counselors really here that are not just there to be a yes man, but be able to really make simple changes that, that would have a better quality of life yeah. for our citizens, Yep. then that's why I'm here. Being a Marine, being an Army guy, being a businessman, open up a nonprofit, mm -hmm. All that and all those trials and tribulations, I think, prepared me for this this day. Why now? Mm -hmm. Because we're only on borrowed time. So yeah, no. I better get out there and do something. I really love my city. I really do. And I think I'm at a point right now, uh, professionally uh, knowledgeable, understanding a little bit about politics. Not much. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a novice to those out there. Um, but seeing that, it's just, in order for you to, to make a difference, you have to do something about it. Don't sit on the sidelines wishing you could do something about it. Let's just get down and do something about it. Absolutely. So, I'm here, man. I'm here for the long run. So, just to... Did I answer your question or no? To buy, to buy off of it a little bit. Uh, why Lawrence? You say you keep, you were saying before, you just keep coming back to Lawrence. And, and I know the answer to this question because I'm the same way. Yeah. And everybody, you know, my friends and every, we all have our reasons why. But like you said, you know, you grew up here. You got a little bit of, you know, love for your home city. But I have a lot of love. But and I and I know I, I have my own reasons. But you know, you can go anywhere in the world. Yep. But I always come back to Lawrence. Why? Why, why, why Lawrence? <laughs> All right. So there's a there's a saying. I'm sure that you you've heard this in it being a Lawrenceian, right? Yep. Yep. And it's about the water spigot on Main Street. Yep. I think. Right. Yep. And it says that everyone that came in contact. With that water from that spigot, yep. no matter where you go, you'll always return back to that spigot. So, this is my hometown. Yep. I crawled those areas. Yep. I went through alleyways. I've done a lot of good things and bad things here. Yep. And it's just a way for me to come back and give back to my city um, more than what it gave me and or have more respect for my city than I had back then. Before, yeah. You know? I think, too, so. I found as, like, as I get older and sort of you, you go other places, you come back, you kind of see the potential yeah. within the city. Exactly. There's a ton of potential within the city, so I, agree. I think that draws me back, too. That's, you can. As you get older, you're wiser, yeah. and you know, you'll, you'll see, you know, you have a different perspective in view. Yeah, no, you absolutely. Know, in life, so. So, now that's my answer. No, back. That, that's an that's the May spigot. It's, it's Blame that, it on it's, that. It's May Street. It's, 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 May Street it's, spigot. it's the old spigot there. Yeah. Um, if you had to sort of Take a look at this now. You're running for city council. You're going to have, you know, if elected, a lot of say in what goes on within the city. If you had to pick one issue, uh, one issue that's going going on, one one thing that really you in, think in my district or well, or Lawrence well, we'll in say, we can say your district if you want to. If you want to say your district, um, I mean, I'm a council at large, but I live right. You live you live in district, district E. If you want to yeah. if you want to talk about your district first, and then we can open up to the city because okay, as a, at large, you will have a lot of say. Correct. On every other district, but if you want to start here, what's one thing yeah. in your district that you you think that you would like to work on? One thing citywide you want to work on. So, let's just do the the local here first. Yeah, the, yeah absolutely. The district e. district so, e. Uh, one of my challenges and one of my my goals is um, to help the 
many, many, many citizens and residents here on Everett Street that stop me all the time about the craziness of that street. Now, <clears throat> I'm all about prevention. You know, yep. I'm not the type of person that likes to come up and now make laws when someone dies. You know what I mean? I try to prevent from a life being taken too soon. That street is horrible. I could hear it from here, yeah. the races that goes on. So one thing that I experienced personally myself, and that's why it's touched me, and I'm a little bit more emotionally attached. Mm -hmm. I moved here about a year. A year after, I was walking around, and I met a friend that I haven't seen in 20 years. Wow. He lived right on Everett Street. So I was facing Everett Street, had my dog. We were talking out of the blue. He goes, a kid. I didn't pay no mind because I was talking to him. But in the peripheral vision, I, I seen something, but I didn't know what it was. When I turned over, it was a two-year-old baby. Wow. I dropped my, my dog. My friend went towards Beltnap yep. and Everett to block that car that was coming, and I ran towards the baby. Now, I hold a parent fully responsible for that. Let me just add that. Right. All right? Fully responsible. Right. Uh, because it was a two-year-old. Right. And I know two-year-olds could get out, but there's no excuse for that. Right. But we ran, picked up, and it was just getting dusk, and um, walked around, handed the baby back. What would have happened if it would have been a little bit more darker? out there and there wasn't my friend or me there i'm sorry yeah that's you don't that want to think you don't want exactly. to think about it i got kids you don't want to think about i got kids that's an important so now thing. we important. have to now i seen that with my own eyes and when now when every residents come and tell me i believe that because yeah. that's what i hear and that's what i see so i'm definitely gonna help jim molito actually was the one that really got that going but i'm gonna help him up as much as i can to do something to prevent that and it could be i don't think four-way stop signs are gonna make any difference yeah. i think mobile what i'm gonna try to fight with a lot of people is putting uh, speed bumps down. yeah and it could be removable speed yep. bumps yep. Yep. Portable winter, ones. So, yeah portable yeah, yeah. yeah it's not a big deal yeah. and, and i'll also you know i'll also volunteer my veterans you know to yeah. come and Put them down and take them off so that the city doesn't have to pay for it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the one. The overall general in Lawrence, I'm talking security. As a Marine, as a Marine and, a, and an Army veteran and, and done 13 years, I'm, I, I am, I would, I'm not going to go as far as being a subject matter expert, but I'm an expert in the field of security. Yeah. Pretty much, uh, I would say. Very safe. Yep. Yeah. So we used to go and deploy to places, and the first thing we have to do is try to understand the culture that we're going to go be asking them right. to die for us. Right, right. So we do that. Yeah. Then after that, you know, you, you've got to go ahead and, and now talk to the chief tribal by himself, let him know what you got going on, you know, you know, doing, uh, you know, whatever projects that come up. You have to get that confidence. But all this time, I know this guy wants to kill me. You know what I mean? Right. He's just playing both sides right now. Right. So I always got to have that security level. Yeah. My thing is, if you have secure city, I think a residents will be a lot happier. Um, I think I think you'll see more residents going out and spending more of their earned dollars in a in our geographic area. You know, going out to a store, whatever stores there is out here, right? Um, so. My thing is security of this city is crucially important to me. Um, not just because we could help more in the um, flow of drugs, mm -hmm. you know, through our borders, um, but putting more boots on ground is the key to this problem. It's getting out of control. Um, I think that the administration has done very well in bringing in about, what, 21, 21 or 23 new officers. Yeah, somewhere up there. Um, they have another seven that are going to be ready to... Uh, graduate here soon, mm -hmm. and then on that and those from too, they also have seven more. So it's getting up there, and I want to be part of that process. Yeah, I want to be able to, because if you're not secured in your own home, you're not going to have people walking around spending money locally. You're not going to have investors that are going to come up here and invest in you, and then we're just going to be like, again the black sheep of the whole uh, state. And I'm just tired of being, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, what am I looking for? That stigma that looked that at Lawrence that way. Yeah, yeah, has, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's so many good quality people. Yeah and the city of that really are trying to make a difference. And unfortunately, we're facing an opiate crisis across this country, not just Lawrence. But again, you asked me what my district E I'm um, passionate about, and my thing forward is definitely security. I get other agendas, obviously, right. but, but if you foremost, one, yeah. security. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, once again, I want to uh, welcome anyone that's joining in with us, you know, midway through thank this you. conversation. Is my phone on? 
Um, I I got uh, I uh, sitting here with JT Torres, uh, Lawrence City Council candidate, City Council at large candidate uh, here in the city as a primary coming up. Yes. Uh, so thank you for joining us on All Politics Is. If you have any questions uh, for JT, feel free uh, throw them out. If we Pop get a chance, out. we'll ask him. If we don't have a chance, we'll get him to him, and we'll we'll make Absolutely. sure he reaches out to you and, and gets you your. Uh, or I'll come to you. We'll just give you the response, and you can post it out. Yeah, you want. yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely get. It. So if you have any questions, let us know. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us. So we're gonna move into one of the hotter topics. What a topic is it? that I'm sure you know a little bit more about than, than most, uh, but it's it's really a sort of a hot topic that kind of popped up in the city a couple couple weeks ago now, maybe a couple months ago now. Uh, but it, it's a, the issue of homelessness within our city. Now, obviously, you deal with this more on a different level, but you deal with the veterans' homelessness, but same thing, yeah. same idea, yeah. what we're going through, and recently you know, there was a, a large, for anyone out there that doesn't know the, the situation that we were in, uh, we had uh, what we called the tent city, yep. it was in I'm Lawrence, very familiar with the area. Uh, under the bridge, under the central bridge here in Lawrence, a lot of, lot of people were under there, uh, and it sort of came in, you know, parts of it were safer, parts of it were more drug oriented, but yes. that wasn't necessarily the case for everybody, but Correct. there were there were a lot of cases that... Um, yeah, they were all intertwined. Right. And so uh, the city took a stand. Uh, they had a police command post down there, sort of a checkpoint. Things started to disperse and everything. There was a lot of, there was a lot of people who were upset about how it was handled. A lot of people were happy about how it was handled. How does JT think? You know, if you, if you, had, uh, if you were on a sitting, if you were a sitting city council at that point in time, do you agree with how the city handled it? If so, good. If not... How would you handle it? Because you see you something you see on a daily basis. Yeah, I see it on a daily basis. And, and the reason why I'm going to give you my opinion, the reason why I'm going to give you my opinion, not what the rest of the world thinks, yep. it's because I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. So my issues is I, I go there maybe once every two weeks, mm -hmm. and then there's a couple of really fine gentlemen uh, here, Joe D'Amour. Yep. He has a mission, hope, mission of hope. Sorry, mission I of hope, hope yeah. I don't, it up no, no, no. April. Um, he's done some phenomenal work and has called me to do missionary work with him when he's there. So I have. I've been there numerous of times, uh, not just to take care of my veterans and get my veterans out of that environment mm -hmm. um, and, and into uh, hopefully a more stable environment, yep. obviously. Um, but I'd sit in the middle of that whole compartment area or, or houses, whatever you, tent city. I sit in the middle and I've yelled out, who wants to stop? living the way you're living right now. Let me get you out of here right now. If you're ready for me to get you out of here, I'm going to get you a nice warm shower. I'll get you clean clothes. I'll get you a haircut, shaven, and off to the right direction. Out of 30-something plus people that were there, guess how many came up? I'm going to take a guess. It's, it's sort of upsetting, but it's going to be closer to probably zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Zero. I didn't give up, though. Right. Yeah, yeah I went right. back then again about another month. I came up there. We give out. What we did is we go and swap out socks and yeah. t-shirts and stuff like that. I don't try to do that very often, right. but there's a lot of people that I'm connected with that, yeah. too. Uh, we went again. Same thing. They were giving out coats. I came back again. I said, listen, I have an apartment, four bedrooms. However, i got to take you to detox first. Yeah. Right? Work on it. Step up right now again. If you want to get off of this environment, I, I don't care if you're a veteran or a non-veteran. I said, anybody that wants to get out of here, and I had other people there. Guess how many people showed up then? Zero. Zero. So I have, uh, that's a little soft spot for me yeah, when no. you ask. Yeah. Because even though we're trying the community, a lot of the people in the community were trying to do the right thing, a lot of people were just going there for four op opportunities. Yeah. Let's just get that straight. Yeah. Right? And bumping their gums about, oh my God, how we're doing this and we're doing that. And all it is is they go there once every six months, take a goddamn picture, and move on. No. You're there every month. You would know is that there was no this not a homeless issue. That was an addiction issue, and unless we faced it in that manner and get the Department of Health and Services statewide here, uh, you know, um, uh, what's the other problems that the, the uh, welfare as a name, but I, you know, uh, some yeah. I know what you're assistance. talking about. Some yeah. type of federal some assistance. Sort of yeah. federal some sincerity. type of federal yeah. assistance coming in here, really just hitting it hard. Hitting it hard week after week. Bring up all the state resources and even federal resources to that location and say, okay, we're here for one thing. If you're addict, then come with us. And if you don't, then you walk away. 
I understand that people live there. I do, and I understand. I, listen, I wasn't a virgin being all this. I get that. I ate top ramen noodles and cornflakes for dinner as well. I get that. Yeah. But it's got to come a time when if I'm extending you my hand, because I've been there and I want to get you out of that situation, listen, we're, t we're doing it for, because we A, we have the experience of what we went through, yeah. and we really sincerely want to help. Yeah, no, absolutely. But if you're just going up here, up the hill, panhandling, and you go down to the first little dorm, buy your drugs there, and then go to the third term, bypass the second because there were more clean people there. Yeah. Go to the third to shoot out. What kind of incentive are you going to have when people are going to be bringing you breakfast, lunch, dinner? Almost now, enabling. with that said, exactly, yeah. with that said, what I said was that let's stop approaching this like a homeless issue, and now let's either A, bring court systems in, in to either do like a section, um, what's it called, section 8, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do sort some, of so, and get him into get him housing. help. Yeah. Get him. No, yeah. not not housing because you have to address the, the addiction first, right? Because right? it would be counterproductive. Right. So do that. But I that went on deaf ears. But I would have done it a little bit more different instead of just posting, you know, officers there and then dispersing that because all they're doing is going to a right, part of the say, city. They're, yeah. So they're, they're still <laughs> and home, we they're already still know where they, where they where they moved to. Yeah. So it's just a matter now where enough people are going to get tired of that area and then call again and yeah. they're going to be moved again. So it's like we're kicking the can down the road. Stop. Let's stop and really come up with a solution. Now, I'm hoping with that new um, homeless coordinator, I'm hoping that, you know, things change. I, I don't know. I haven't really worked with them very well or in many cases, but I'm hoping that, you know, the city's paying, I don't know how many, what's the salary these days, but the, yeah, I'm not sure. the, the city's paying for, for this, so get out there. Put boots on ground, find out where the hot spots at, and do your job. So hope. I mean, we haven't really seen the results of that yet because no. it's still really new. It so is. let's it is. Let, let's hope that that's that that's the case that it sort of it can alleviate because it's something that it's not new in the city. You know, mm -mm. It's, it's always been. No. An and issue, Gary, you know? to be honest, too, um, out of all the people that I ran into, um, I want to say out of thirty people, maybe about four or five were from Lawrence all the time. The rest were Lowell, Tewksbury. Um, uh, frame at Framingham, yeah, at Framingham. Uh, you had, you know, people scattered from all, all over Lawrence, and it's because Lawrence has cheap drugs. Yeah. Supply. So if we go ahead Supply and man. we just, yeah, man up, put more boots on ground, sooner or later, these people are going to find out that this is the wrong town to be messing with and move on to the next. And I'd hate to even say that because then it'll be the next city's problem right they're not necessarily curing the and, problem yeah we're just, just pushing it away push so that's why else. i think collectively i again you know let's get together man yeah. i know you know there's let's brainstorm you know one two three heads are better than just one you know what i mean no absolutely. so and everybody's opinion matters just put it out there problem is that a lot of people in this city they all want to be the white trojan horse in the room and never just really want to just sit down and take notes right. and, you know no, oh i got a better way to do it wait a minute you know with no proven facts on right. yeah those are the ones that show up every six months for the photo op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell people now, if you want to go and get a, a photo op opportunity in my in, with my veterans, make sure you bring a checkbook. Yeah. You want to exploit them? Okay. Donate a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks for the picture. Yeah. You know, plain and simple. You're just yeah. done with that. But yeah, uh, you know, it could be handled a little better. Yes, uh, I think the people were demanding it, and I think I think the reaction was based on what the people's anger, I think, was in Lawrence about it and outraged. I think Absolutely. one of those things will have to, I think that played a part as well. But yeah, it could have been handled a little bit, you know. A little bit different. Yeah. 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 Seems to be the consensus, but a lot of people are talking about it. Yeah. It, but it did need to be handled, and it, it was handled. I, I just, it to be, yeah. It's usually, almost, nobody really says it didn't need to be handled. Everyone says it needed to be handled. They just no, I didn't necessarily agree with how it was handled. But. Yeah, because it's like, you again, you're not, you know, you're putting a Band-Aid on the problem. Right, exactly. And that seems you to know? be the consensus. And I, we already know pretty much a lot of the areas that they moved in. Yep. And that area is getting now. It's getting worse. Yeah. yeah. I know so, exactly what you're talking and about. we got to yeah. stop. We got to stop. Yeah. This is not. This is not working, man. And, Agreed. and I know that there's um, people up in the higher chain of command that uh, are getting paid the big bucks to come up with solutions. Yeah. But maybe we don't have to go all the way to the top. Maybe yeah. we just come up here locally and talk amongst Figure each other on our own, yeah. and come up with a solution. Yeah. yeah because sometimes, sometimes that's what you got to do. It takes that sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us for All Politics Is. Thank We're sitting you. here with uh, J.T. Torres, Lawrence City Council candidate. Uh, we're going to move on to my favorite question. Uh-oh. Uh, what think is that? Your phone's over here. If you, whether or not you want your phone. Oh, phone yes, yes, so, yes. It's just a quote, a quote, and I admire this guy. My this is my favorite question we ask. Is, uh, if you had to pick a historical figure that you admire, one historical figure, who would you pick and why? I think it sort of brings out a little bit more 
on candidates than we typically get to ask with these questions. So yeah. I like it. So if you had to pick somebody, JT, who would it be? Okay. Uh, again, and you're going to see in other interviews or people ask me, I always revert back to the military. Yep. Because honestly, the military is what helped me become a man and understand my surroundings a little better. And so I always look at, I live by a certain code that the Marine Corps always taught us. And one of it was, you know, loyalty, honor, integrity, respect, selfless service. So I live by those codes all my life. And I try, I try the best to do it. So I always look up to leaders. In the Marine Corps, it was Chesty Pulla. It was one of the most decorated Marine generals in the entire United States Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. um, though he was smart, brutal when it came to his tactics, he was an amazing, amazing general. But General MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, is, was a general also that was a no-nonsense type of general. The, what I'm reading into in regards to his demeanor, yep. his action, was always posed, was always postured, was always like, you know, uh, if you've never seen a real true, true, true military man walk in accordance to protocols and regulations, yeah, you have to go him. see how he walked. Because yeah. every little thing we do in the military is by the numbers. So you swing six to the front, three to the front, to the rear. Can't go more than that. That's the proper walk method. And you see him in his past just... Is just a phenomenal guy just yeah. to see him. All his moves and directions were so precise and clean. And he had a quote, and I always, always admire that quote. And I apologize, I don't have uh, more info on actually his tour duties. And I apologize, I owe you that, and I'll make sure that I get that to you. But one of the best quotes that I feel for me is, and it, and it resonates with me, is he quoted, A true leader has the confidence to stand alone. The courage to make tough decisions, but the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not out, he does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the equality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. Love that quote, man. So read it. Great quote, yeah. Read it, yeah. dissect it. Yeah, that's a that's really, a big one. You could really spend time on that. Really quote get alone. into yeah, it. Yeah. And once you see the connections and, you know, I'm telling you, it'll mean so much more yeah. to you. I took time. I didn't realize how true that was to me. Yeah. It's because I didn't come out here in the Marine Corps. I didn't come out here to be a leader. I did it. They were giving me position of a, I was an E2, and they wanted to give me a responsibility of an E3. That's unheard of yeah. in the military. That, that's not the way it works. Yeah. That's why you have a rank structure. Yeah. And I told my lieutenant there, I said, I don't want it. I don't want the responsibility. You're going to be my team leader. I said, no, I'm not. Said, I'm not cut out to be a leader, man. I'm just going to be here, do my time, and get out. And he insisted. You are going to take first team, and you're going to be my team leader. That's an order. I'm like, whatever, dude. Okay. Maybe I get to do a little less. Right, right yeah. So I did. I went in there. Um, I hated it every single minute. I was processed for a bad conduct, discharge the first year. But this lieutenant seen something in me that I didn't see. Mm -hmm. So when he gave me that position, and I'm going to go real quick because I don't know how much time. How much time? No, we got, we got plenty of time. Don't worry about so, it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to bore people out there either. No, so no. This is Bobby what they want to see. Yeah. We want to give everyone this opportunity. So um, so he came up, and, and so we, we did a mission. Now, we were responsible for uh, protection of nuclear fuel, nuclear weapons, and yeah. stuff like that during that time. So they were they had a submarine that was going to give me defueled and stuff, and so we had to buy that, be there to provide a security. So Puget Sound, Washington, <laughs> first of all, it's cold. Yep. Because we went during the winter. It is Very cold. Cool. So we you have a deck like this overlooking the submarine. The submarine's maybe about, you know, ten stories down, yep. you know what I mean, for the ship work. But I am you're here and you got cameras and you can see the whole, you know, um, perimeter of the so I we each team has four Marines that were going constantly patrolling over around the uh, sub and then one right there in the cameras, the alarms, yep. and all that stuff. Well, we started posting people, and it was cold. It was maybe about 20 degrees, probably. And uh, I was the last one to post. And my lieutenant said, this is your post. I'm like, excuse me? I was like, in here with a hot chocolate bag? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he goes, yep, this is your post. You come up here, you wash you guys, you call in anything. I'm like, sir, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to be able to stay here 
for my whole post, nice and warm, drinking hot chocolate. Is that what you're trying to tell me? He goes, yep, that's the perks of being a, a team leader. From that point on, he see, again, he's seen something in me that I didn't see. Yeah. I was so comfortable in that post. Yeah, I would imagine. For the record, <laughs> I went out there and I shared my hot chocolate with yeah. all my Marines. <laughs> I get good leader work, all right, for the record. All right. After that, I went back. Again, now mind you, I was processed for bad conduct discharge. Right. I, I went in there the next day, spit shining my boots. Yes. Yeah. I went, I had creases like thicker than these on my uniform. Yep. I went and got a high and tight. My life changed from that point on. And I just skyrocketed with it with rank. I got the taste of that. Yep. And with the lieutenant seeing something in me that I didn't see myself, I didn't come out there to lead. I really didn't. I didn't go out there to lead. I went out there to just be a grunt, be an mm -hmm. infantry man, a rifle man. Work. Yeah. yeah, take out whatever uh, adversaries were, were they had in front of us and do my time and that's it. Yeah, I wanted to do a little bit more time, but I didn't want no position of authority. I yeah. really did not. And here I am. And that's why I love that quote because you could never know. You, you don't. You don't set out to be a leader. Man. That, you don't just come up there unless you're taking people and taking them to all these Ivy League schools and grooming them you know, to a certain point to do exactly something. But people that come from the streets, like, you know, that are not the streets, but come from towns that, yeah. that, that are not so very popular, you know, and to have that opportunity, that grand opportunity to be taught not only just managerial skills, capabilities, but think outside the box, mm -hmm. responsible for lives, which mm -hmm. that was even, I think, um, after I really started thinking about it, in respons you were responsible for lives, you know, that's when I took it serious, you know, I'm like, no, nah, this can't happen. And from there on, man, I've always had this, this go get it attitude, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know, if you're complaining about how many problems we have, then you're not spending enough time coming up with a solution, you know? All you're doing is worrying about, oh, what if? What if a dog had a square out? It's, it's a good one. I like that, so you're Stop. complaining too much, you're spending too much time not coming up with a solution. I like that. Yeah, that's good. Sense. And that's the way it is. I don't look at the club, I don't look at the cup half empty. I look at it, you know, half full. I mean, it's always, for every problem in this country, man, there's always a solution. And if there's people that are willing to just have a civil dialogue about it, I guarantee you we come up with solutions. Absolutely. You. So when people just got to come up to these places with low ego admissions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And leave your Trojan horse outside and yeah. come together for a better cause. This is our community, man. You know, I clean here all the time. All this, this is what I do, okay? The city, that's the city's responsibility. Right. Why am I going to... I live here. You know, I got time when I cut my grass. I'll cut that grass. Yeah. Clean it up. Let's it's my going. neighbor. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right? Yeah, it's my no, neighbor. I get over here. And, I mean, it's just, just you, you also have to take a little pride in, in, in your city. You know, and if absolutely. you don't, then just go. Go. I think that's part of the problem a lot of times is yeah. the lack of. Yeah, yeah. I think people pride. just come up here. I mean, and, it, and the thing is, we've been, we've been so long as marked as one of these cities that. And I'm sure I'm gonna get stuck with this, but it is what it is. Uh, a city that is very easy to obtain services mm -hmm. uh, through whether the federal or state government. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are getting are are, are spreading that that it's I think a little bit less um, stringent here than it would be somewhere else. And we gotta keep away from that. We gotta keep away from that that stigma. We gotta get rid of it. Um, yes, there's too many people here that are in. Um, receiving um, services. Another thing that we don't, and another just popped up, excuse me, and I'm, I'm going. I'm no, going no, no, that's it. fine. Reason we pop up is um, they're talking about, a lot of people, I have not heard that one candidate talk about jobs. What kind of jobs are you really be able to bring to the city that are, are viable jobs? That it's gonna be able to address our demographics, not bringing in high technology jobs. Let me phrase that before anybody just gets out of control. Bring those jobs in because we do have kids that are graduating college nowadays, yeah. right? And that's what they're dealing with more, right? And we want those kids to come back to the city. Absolutely. Yeah. Share your, yeah. your knowledge. Share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can't forget about the parents that are actually don't have those skills, right? Yeah. What do we? They're paying the bills while these kids go to, to, yeah. to school. And if we help them generate, I don't care what you say, but a person that works a week and brings home a check every week is a much happier person than sitting in your house for 30 days yeah. waiting for that check to happen. Yeah. I don't care what you say. A lot of people will. Right. A lot of people will just it, disagree with me, but many no, would agree. No, I, I'm of that mind. You know, if, yeah. you're, if you're out there, and I think there are a lot of people that are of that mind too, if you're out there and you're working 40 hours a week, 
that's absolutely you're, you're gonna be a, a much, much happier much person better, much better place in your and life one of or the you should that, be oh you, you should, should be yeah you should, yeah, you should be yeah, yeah. depending what you get yourself into yeah. too because i don't live over my means I mean, right it's where right I live, no yeah and i love what i do but you know you got to take accountability on yourself too you got to hold yourself accountable at, at times as well too. absolutely so, yeah. um, the job that i'm hoping that they could bring in is be like manufacturing jobs assembly jobs you know green jobs say for yeah. instance like yeah. green energy insulation weather station which is the trade part of it um it, it, that's so much easier to sell to, well not sell, but to recruit individuals for those specific jobs. You don't need a, a college degree for any of those, right. right? All you need is common sense, you know, maybe be bilingual. Yeah. And these are good paying jobs because we've done it. Yeah. You know, we got to think about that. You know, start thinking about those demographics. Reach over the line. Don't just stay here in the city. Go and take a trip out of your own pocket. Go to a freaking New York and talk to a council out there. See what they do. <laughs> Go to New Hampshire. Talk to another. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 that network and and that information that you get with that network that's you know invaluable. Absolutely. You know, I really do. And, and, and people here in the city. I mean, we have city council as large that don't even bother going to South Lauren um, neighborhood meetings. It's sad. Yeah. That's just sad. You're supposed to be. For the people, entire people of the city of Lawrence, not just a certain sector. So, agreed. That needs to stop. There agreed as well. Yeah, right? I agree. That needs to stop. Well, I think that's a good segue too into our final question: is yeah. is it in a week and a half now? People are going to go to the polls. They have ten options. Yeah. And they're going to pick three people. Yeah. Are those? They have, they have to pick three, or they don't have to. Pick, they pick one or two. But yeah, exactly. They don't have to vote for anybody else. We have else. all these people. Why? Why should they pick you? Why do they pick JT over everybody else? Not just that reason alone, but that that was a yeah. a, a, a one way into it is well. You know. First of all, I'm not here again. I think I said stated this. I'm not here for the glory of it. I'm not here chasing medals, and I'm not here to feather my own nest. Mm -hmm. I think that I'll be the most boisterous person in the council chambers. I think I'm gonna have my own unique ways of getting things, and maybe I'm gonna piss off a lot of people in there. Um, or, I don't know. That just means you're doing things right. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. But I'm not there to come and work for any city council. Yeah. I'm not gonna work for any mayor. Yeah. Uh, I'm not working for any directors or chiefs or any of that. I'm working for the American, for the citizens of the city of Lawrence. And I'm not, I'm, I don't want people to consider me a leader. I want people to understand that I am. I am your voice. I am, you know, I follow you. Right. I'm not, I'm not, you're not following me. I'm following you. Yeah. It's what direction do you, the people, want me to go in? That, that, that what is it that is crucially important in your environment, in your life, that you want me to bring up, you know, in a conversation? That's what I'm giving you here. It's not about me. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and donate. I'm going to say it again here, just in case people missed it, at the uh, Mount Vernon neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah. Association, Kelly and everybody, thank you very much for that opportunity, by the way. Um, the I'm going to donate if I'm blessed enough and honored enough and privileged enough to gain a seat. I'm going to donate my stipend that we get to any charitable organization of the people's choice. I want to challenge all the, the rest of city councilors at large and every other city councilor and districts to donate your stipend that first day we're sworn into that that chamber. Do my math quickly. That's that's upwards of about 100, 120, 130 thousand dollars. So yeah, that, that would be interesting. One day, no meetings, no votes. It's a moral thing. It's a morality thing. It's a humanity thing. And if you say you love this city so much. Put your money where your mouth is. I and like it. Do it. I'm not saying the second year, right? Second right. No, year, yeah, 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 we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm hey, sure there are some people that might that be reliant. First on that day, too. yeah, Gary. First day, we could inject 130,000 plus into the city to charitable organizations in this city. So mm -hmm. I challenge you all. I'm sure I'm not going to take very, not going to get very many. Yeah. But we're hoping, know. we're hoping a few you never do. Know. We're hoping a few, a few Definitely. do. Uh, so yeah, I'm there. I'm, I'm your people. I'm the people. I'm telling you, man. I just, uh, what you see is what you get. Yeah. I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not, 
I don't. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I, I think for myself. I speak for myself. Um, and I'm gonna vote for what makes logical sense, not based on theories. Yeah. You know what I mean. So let me check the data. Let me see what you guys need to fight about. And and let me just go at it. Just let me loose. Let me loose. The good thing about democracy that in two years, if you hate what I did, you have the power to vote me out. Just give me Definitely. two years. Yeah. Definitely. That's it. And I agree. Um, and again, thank you. Uh, All politics is. Thank you for joining us. While we're sitting here with JT Torres. If you do have any questions, feel free to get them out to us. Uh, we'll get back to JT. Uh, we'll wrap up, JT. Uh, yeah. One uh, one last way to end it is sort of uh, you want to give everyone uh, a chance to let them know if they do like what you have to say and they want to help you out. How yeah. Can they help you out? Actually, I need a lot. I, I do. If you if you if people that already have know know of me or 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 have seen me in speaking engagements or whatnot, this is this last week is going to be a mad dash to the end. Yep. I started late. Um, I'm still getting a lot of support from people, which is awesome. Um, but I need your help. I need your help to get over uh, that edge. So this whole weekend, we're going to be doing lit drops. Uh, this whole weekend, next week, next week, uh, starting Monday early in the morning, we're going to be holding signs out. Uh, we're also going to be going up there and mounting some signs. I see some banners out there, like four by. Yeah, Six banners, ones, yeah. yeah. So I went with a full by eight. <laughs> so I figured that'll work. So we need help with that. We just need to get the vote out and, and, and people get to know us a little bit more because unfortunately not too many people know. Is uh, there um, an email or a phone number? There, there, there is. 978-258. Uh, no, correction. That was the office number I was giving you. 978-590-2488. Uh, and the website that will be done probably today, probably it's already published, it's jttorresmarinepolitics.com. Definitely. So if you like what JT has to say, feel free to reach out to him. Thank you again, JT, for joining us. Thanks for having, uh, Thanks for having me. All Thank politics you. is, uh, feel free, we're going to be uh, having a couple of these today. We have two more interviews. We're going to be interviewing two other Lawrence City Council candidates. Uh, we're going to be actually interviewing some candidates from Methuen for their city council race early next week. So feel free to... Uh, interject anything if you have any questions you want us to ask the candidates feel free to reach out uh, and thank you once again for joining us uh once again all politics is trying to keep all politics local here uh in the merrimack valley thank you everybody good, good job